Good evening, everyone. Hey, um, all those who are here, near and far, um, welcome to another third Thursday where we, where we bring a special guest each and every third Thursday of the month to talk about our topic of the month. And this Thursday, I am extremely excited. <laughs> Y'all can't see my face. I'm so happy and excited because um, I'll introduce the guest here in a moment, but the guest that we have on for today is near and dear to my heart. I mean, she did birth me, so <laughs> well. she is certainly near and dear to my heart. But first off, for those who don't know me, my name is Melinda, and I am the founder of the Bible Study Amongst Friends group here. And uh, just like to just tell you all a little bit about, about Bible Study Amongst Friends for those who are new. So it's truly a place where you can come to grow, to learn about God, and also a place where you come to fellowship. So if you're on with me tonight, let me know that you are on. Um, if you're watching this on replay, put hashtag replay so that we know that you are here, as well as um, like this post, like this group, let people know that we are here, share this post, share this group, and get the word out. Let people know there's a place that they can come. But as I said, I'm super excited to have my special guest, and I'll go ahead and, and bring her on. And so as you can see, uh, the special guest that we have for this month is my mother, um, a, Apostle. And I'll just give y'all a quick introduction. It's funny because when I asked her for her bio, she sent me like five pages. So my mom is truly... <laughs> And it's also funny because when people ask me, people ask me all the time, well, what does your mom do? I'm like, uh, which job do you want? Because she has like 10 of them. And so so really, really happy to, to have her here. But just to give you a, an introduction of her, I know this will not do it justice, but this is my mother, Apostle Dr. Margaret Wright, uh, who is, she's a speaker. She is an author an author of several books and several more to come. I know she has some books that are on her heart. She's in the process of, of writing some other things as well. I'll let her spill the beans at the end. Um, she's also a dancer. So she's been dancing um, as long as I know, uh, even used to dance professionally. She sings as well. She used to be, uh, she still is a teacher, used to be a principal. Uh, and is the founder of several nonprofits. I know one is a Pride for the Children Ministry. Um, she's a lead apostle at our uh, at at the Pueblo Center of Worship and Empowerment. The woman who ordained me, the woman who prayed me out of my sin. <laughs> and so, <laughs> this is why I am here with you today. Uh, we have a few hellos online, so thank you all for joining. Um, hey, Margo, hello. Um, it's funny because Michelle is on. She said your mom's favorite child is here now. So I guess she's claiming <laughs> to be the favorite. So we'll let her have that here for now. And then Lakitha is on as well, mom. So my roommate from college, Lakitha. Mm -hmm. okay, Lakitha, we are excited to, to have you here as well. And I'll try to pin it so you can see both of us here at the same time. But again, I'm truly excited and, and happy to have my mom um, here with me today. And we're going to talk about the topic that we've been speaking on the Bible study group all month. And so for this month, our topic is reborn in Christ, um, the transformation process. So really talking about what it means to be reborn in Christ, talking about that transformation process, uh, the going from the process of making the declaration to say, you know what, Lord, I'm I'm now proclaiming with my mouth, mouth because we know a part of salvation is to confess it, but also to believe it in your heart that Jesus died. So going um, once you take that step to say, you know what, Lord, you have my attention, you have my heart, uh, I want to live for you. But then we know that it doesn't stop there because a lot of us, we, we start there, but it doesn't stop there. But once you make that um, declaration, once you proclaim, once you believe it in your heart, then that transformation process has to happen. There is change that has to happen within you. There is change that should happen around you. That's one of the things that I want to share uh, for tonight is we should not stay the same. 
uh, when you give your life to Christ, it's not, okay, now I've said those words, I believe in my heart, so now I'm going to heaven and I can just do whatever I want to do. That ain't how it works. <laughs> <That's>, that, <laughs> and, and one thing that I will say before we jump into it is that was one of the things that even I told myself, I laugh because when I talk to believers, I've heard some believers say, well, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. And I look at even my, my mom here, um, Apostle, how many times did you say that you weren't going to do things? But then the Lord said, go on, head over there it's and right. go do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So there's always those moments of, as we know, when we give our life to Christ, it's truly living a life for Christ. It's truly dying to your flesh mm. and submitting to his will and his way and letting you <laughs> your life. So enough for me. I know I've, I've talked to you all, talked your head off a little bit. And so want to um, give my mom um, the opportunity to speak here as well. And so one of the things I know I introduced you and said a lot about you. I know there's a hundred things more, but I just want to ask you a question. What's been the most, what is the most rewarding part of what you do today? What would you say is the most rewarding part of what you do today? I think the most rewarding part is when I am obedient, regardless of the struggle, regardless of what it takes. And she's absolutely right. Almost everything I've done, God asked me, I said, no, at first. <laughs> I'm like the son that said no, repented and came back. And it was because I didn't have the faith in myself, bottom line. And what God had to do is to teach me, it's not about you, Margaret. First of all, I know what I put inside of you. So if I ask you, it's because you're already equipped to do it. I just need your obedience. Wow. And so what I have found is my most rewarding is when I say yes. Because not only does he do what he said he was going to do, but he teaches me about me. And then I go, oh, for instance, here I am, an undergraduate in theater, you know, Miss Professional Theater. I'm walking off the steps of the theater building and I hear teacher as if somebody was standing beside me and said it loudly in my ear. I said, teacher, oh no, I couldn't be no teacher. I said, oh no. I said, Lord, you let one of them children say something to me? Oh no, I couldn't be a teacher. And I really thought I could not be a teacher. I thought, oh no, I wouldn't last. But the first job I ever had teaching was a community college in Virginia when I taught that night. I was like, whoa, this is so wonderful. Oh my God. So that's the experience I would say. Yeah, okay. and it's it's one of those things too, when we're operating in the space where God has created us to be, that's where you feel most fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It's when you're walking obedience, because how many of us have the Lord, and sometimes as we know, the Lord will speak to us loudly and clearly when he's trying to get your attention. Uh, for me, it was the moments where you say you need to leave that relationship. But God will do that. And when we're warring with God, because that's what we're doing, we're walking in disobedience, a lot of times we're not at peace. We walk around here, we, we uh, oftentimes we try to find peace and healing in other places just because we're trying to avoid being obedient to what God told us. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> yeah. And so I want to ask you a question because uh, one of the things that we talked about in the Bible study. Um, uh, earlier this month was about what it means to be reborn in Christ. And so I just want to ask you, what does that mean to you? When you hear the words being reborn in Christ, what does it mean to you? I think for me, it's about the realness of my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because out of that reborn process, you've already talked about salvation. People know about repenting of sins. You know about the declaration of saying, I'm a Christian, dot, dot, dot. But for me, the rebirth it's about me being birth, about me learning about me and what he's put inside of me. When you invite Christ in your life, you know that, okay? But what has he already equipped you with? So the birthing of the different things within me helps to create that rebirth on a greater level. And I heard you say transformation. That's what happens, that transformation. So for me, it was Christ coming for me. Mm. as a matter of fact when I struggle when I get to that place and y'all know I get there and you get there too where it looks like in my strength I cannot do it 
And sometimes I feel overwhelmed. I feel, oh my gosh, I feel like I, I, I'm failing because I can't do it the way. When I get to that place where I know I can't do it, one of the things I'll say is, come get me, Jesus. And I promise you, every time I feel the presence of the Lord. Mm, so when I, I know I'm saying more, but when you get to that place, even in your transformation process, and it is a process. Yeah. Allow God to come get you when you can't carry yourself. Mm. I'm making yeah. myself happy on that. <laughs> look, you're making me happy over here. I'm like, look, look little do y'all know, I came from for a word from my mom. <laughs> I came to get blessed a word from her. Uh, and you have, so Sheena's in here. She said, Christ will come for you. Uh, Marco said, oh, come get me Jesus. Come get me Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So let me ask you a question here. Oh, and then um, Shelly, she said, oh, and Sharon said, come get me Jesus. Uh, and Shelly said, keyword process. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. And, mm -hmm. and that's a place actually, thank you, Shell, because you said the stage. That's a place where I want to start because there are many people who start the process um, of, as we said, you know, salvation, but then they get stuck there because they expect the transformation to happen immediately. And then they, they because they make the declaration, but then they're sitting there and they're like, wait, I'm looking around, nothing's changed. I'm still at the same job that I didn't like. Um, I'm still in this same toxic relationship that I had. So why do you feel that is for some people to where they're either stuck in that place or some people kind of give up at that point? I guess, what words or what wisdom would you have for them? Um, I would say the realness of God and the realness of relationship with God. I say that because I grew up in a traditional church and there's a lot of value, not disrespecting anyone. There was a, a commitment to service. There was a commitment to attendance, uh, a faithfulness there. But one of the things I found in my walk with God that makes the difference, and come on, y'all, y'all got to agree with me on this, is the relationship that you have with God. And first of all, I had to learn that God could accept me as I was. And I think people struggle there because the expectation was that once you got saved, that one expectation, everything is going to be different. You got the power of God. Oh, Jesus, let's roll, let's roll. You know, and, and the other misconception was that it was going to be easy. When you hear my yoke is easy and my burden is light, sometimes you think the road is going to be easy. But what I found was the realness of relationship with God. And the reason I say that is because as you're struggling trying to do right, as you're struggling trying to obey God the best way that you know how. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm real. So guess what I told God one time? I was struggling, struggling. I said, God, I need a real God. I told him, I said, I live in a real world and I deal with a real devil. So I need a real God. And see, I'm, I'm gonna help you with this. My relationship with God is not like most people. I'm just gonna say it. And that's what I love about it. Because God accepted me where I was and he did come for me. I felt I was too bad to be a Christian. I'm going to be real. I got pregnant in high school. Church put me out of the junior choir. I told me, go join the, the adult choir. Here I was, 16 years old. And I looked and I said, mm, those people, oh, they're in their 30s. I'm going to be with them. You know, and as a 16-year-old, I was like, oh, my gosh. And I sat on that pew being so angry. You put me out of the junior choir. You told me I could not lead your youth group, dot, dot, dot. But the bottom line, the message that came to me was, you're too bad for God. So fast forward, when I did come to that place where I wanted to accept Christ, guess what? Guess who showed up for me? Guess who came for me? He came. Y'all, he came in a vision. I'm sitting in a Bible study and the man said, anybody want to accept Christ? Stand up. I stand up. And it's if everybody left the room, he was standing in front of me. He says, Margaret, I love you. Come. I said, but Lord, you don't know what I've done. If you knew what it's for somebody here, y'all. I said, if you knew what I'd done, you wouldn't be standing there. He said, come. And guess what, y'all? I started telling God all my sins. I did this. I did that. And I kept looking. I kept thinking, now, he's going to, at one point, say, oh, yeah, girl, you are. You, you're too rough for me. I honestly, in my heart, felt like he was going to walk away. But he didn't. He stayed there. That's the beginning of that relationship of transformation. So now, when I get to that place where I'm struggling, 
I remind God I'm in a real world. I'm dealing with a real devil. I don't need no fake God. I don't need no sometime God. I need a real God that he does show up. Yeah, and I think it's important because we 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 oftentimes define our relationship with God by our past. And also mm-hmm. by the past people we've encountered because because my mother treated me this way or because my brother treated me this way or because my best friend who would never hurt me treated me this way, we approach God with the same hurt because the, the sight that we have, we're looking through hurt eyes and we perceive our God that way. And sometimes because of that, it hinders that relationship part because we're going to God to say, you know what, God, I don't, I, I don't fully trust you. I, I want to trust you, but my heart isn't fully in it. And so I love how you said, as you said earlier, where it's like, Jesus, I need you. I need a real God. I need a God who's going to come to me. Because one of the things we know about God is if you ask, if you truly ask him, he will come through. If you truly want God to move, and that's one of, and, and in my testimony, that's one of the things I had to pray. I said, you know what, Lord, I don't agree. I need you to change my heart. Mm-hmm. Yes. And was, yes. And I was very sincere about that prayer. I, I, I met that prayer with all of my heart. I said, God, you, I said, I need you to change my heart, align my heart with yours. And what he did over time was he changed my heart. <laughs> yes. He changed yes. my heart about it. And so I just want to ask because... Before you go on, I want to add a little bit here. Not only is because of they're looking at themselves of their past. You said a mouthful and all that is true and good. But also sometimes it's because of the present. They struggle because of what they're presently going through, the way things look right now. and And it's hard to see that it can be any different than this. Yeah, And that too can make people struggle and stumble. And some give up. Yeah, feeling like you're not worthy, feeling like you're not deserving of 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 God's love, of God's goodness. And feeling like God's not going to come through for you. Yeah. Bottom line. So sometimes you can't see the future or the present, the yeah. forest, or the trees. It's, it's, it's like the guys who, and if, when they were to spy in the promised land, oh, the giants, the giants. You know, the enemy can, and circumstances can be like a giant, but you set them out for it. Yeah, that's so true. And so I want to ask you a, another question because you touched on what um, that journey of coming to Christ and and how it was for you and, and how it really took for God to show himself to you for you to move forward because of where you were. And so um, I just want to ask you, since this is about the, the topic this month is truly about that change and that transformation. Uh, and one of the things that we talked about was how the transformation starts from the inside but then things outside start to change you know as God starts to change your heart he starts to change what you desire and then naturally the things around you start to change it changes the places you go it may change the people that you talk to and so I just want to ask you at what point in your journey after that encounter with Jesus did you start to realize I've changed or hey I'm different. <laughs> and 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 I'll say, what were some of the things around you because that change was happening in you? What were some of the things around you that started to change? Okay, I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to upset some people. So you may want to turn your volume down so you don't hear me right now. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. One of the first thing that changed for me was my awareness of the presence of God my awareness of his presence. How often do you walk through a day, go through a lifetime for some people, sadly to say, or go through a whole period of time and you're not aware of his presence. And I'm saying to turn turn your volume now because I remember I was going to take a shower and all of a sudden I felt naked. I said, ooh, I God can see. I said, Margaret, he can see through your clothes. I said, oh. (laughs) But just that awareness of his presence was so real to me. And so um, ask me that question again. I think, oh, I, I know what I was going to say, too. I think one of the first things, too, when I started learning, I said, oh, God, I, all right, I told you my relationship is different with God. We talk straight, straight talk. I said, God, I got you. I said, I got you. See, you, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, you're trying to trick me. I got you. You tell me, delight myself in the Lord, and you will give me the desires of my heart. I said, God, you know what happens as I spend time with you? You change the desires of my heart. Yeah. <laughs> like you want what you want from me. I'm like, oh, 
I see what you're doing. But that was awareness that as I spent time with him, I began to change on what I desired. And what's so beautiful about that, the Bible talks about how God, I love the scripture says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God really has great things for us. I'm not saying that as a stereotype or a cliche, but guess what? As you spend time with him, as I spend time with him, he molds us, he changes us. And then you realize you don't want to do some of the things you did before. You know why? Because you love him more. Let me give you a quick example, if you don't mind. I was trained in professional theater. And right when I was getting ready to step in the theater, I had two contracts with two major companies and they would have put me on Broadway. But both times the Lord told me to say no. Mm. Say no. (laughs) And I said, and and what the first time I said no, they broke the well, both times they broke the rules for me. But the bottom line is the guy had just come back from a mission trip and they want me to play a voodoo woman. Mm. I struggled because here it is a contract that will take me professional, that will put me in this place. And so all I know is, guess what? My love for God was greater. So that's an example of how he'll change you, that transformation. Yeah. Because I loved him more, even though I had signed, both times I had signed the contract, the guy pulled me in. He was all excited. He said, guess we wrote this season. We got this for you. I got a song. I got this New York. He wrote it just for you to sing. I was like, ooh, go girl, get it, girl. Oh. And then he says, and I want you to play this voodoo woman. I said, like, hold up. Right. But I had to go back and I agonized for two weeks. But because God has changed my heart, I came back to him. I said, I cannot preach God in the day and play devil at night. Oh, wow. And I walked away from that. But guess what? God still allowed me to use my gifts in other ways, but I'll leave that there. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. So the scripture that you quoted and what you said, we actually talked about that in morning devotion yesterday. So wow. that was our, our scripture for yesterday morning uh, about how is, and I talked about how the saying, you know, birds of a feather flock together and how uh, it's the, the whole, um, that's speaking to how the more you hang around someone you become like them and so the same thing goes even for the lord the more time mm-hmm. we spend in his mm-hmm. presence the more time we spend uh, mm-hmm. reading reading his word mm-hmm. uh, the more time we spend mm-hmm. even just even being up here and, and listening to this live right mm-hmm. now how it mm-hmm. it speaks to our spirits it touches our hearts and and it and even one of the things that I love about God is, and, and y'all hear me, for those who are watching, y'all hear me joke all the time about how God always hit me with the one-liners because he does it. He hit me with the one-liners, he drops the mic, he walks away. Um, but you can't unhear something that's from the Lord. Like when the Lord speaks to you, even when you're listening to someone, uh, whether it be someone that's live, someone that may physically be there with you and they speak a word and it's a word that you need to hear, whether it be a word from God saying it's time for you to let go and move forward or a word from God saying, hey, you need to um, move into this role or take this position. You can't unhear it. it. It sits with you for a while. But one thing I love about God is he knows exactly what we need when we need it. It's like so many messages are so timely how he knows. And I can see just some comments here. Um Shelly said, woo this, he truly changes us and changes those around us. The awareness of it will have you singing his praise to anybody. Yes, I love that. And then Sheena said, he knew us when he formed us in our mother's womb. So he knows the mistakes we would make. He knew we would deny him, but it was up to us to pick up our cross and follow him. Go ahead, girl. (laughs) Yes. Sheena, we need to have you up here preaching. Amen. <laughs> Glory. I'm good. Ooh. Yeah. Oh but one of the things that I like that you spoke to, and it it segue and segues into another question, is how God told you to say no. How wish God time. will <laughs> you said wish time. <laughs> Matter of fact, I wrote a book I think last year, I haven't published yet, says how to say no and feel good about it. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of us need that book. 
<laughs> but just even when she talked about how um, with the play and and how it was it was that dream position with your heart truly desired. Even your heart desired God more than it desired the position, but it's what you wanted and how God told you to say no. And so I, I one thing that we talked about in the Bible study is how not only will God tell us to do things that we have to be obedient, but how sometimes God will allow doors to shut because that's not the place for us to go. Uh, and, and also too, because when those doors shut, how it pushes us towards our purpose. Uh, we talked about Jonah because, you know, Jonah ran from the Lord. Uh, as he ran from the Lord, got on a boat, went, it went to, headed in the opposite direction of Nineveh where the Lord was sending him. But yet he gets thrown overboard, fish swallows him and brings him right on back <laughs> to the place where he was supposed to be anyway. So I just want to ask you a question about when was a time that Say it was something that you truly desired, but God allowed that that door to shut um, because he had something better for you. So I want you to talk about a moment in your life where there was a door that closed, but at the end you saw that, hey, this was something that I really needed. Okay, I'm going to to burst your bubble for a little bit because um, not only will God shut a door, but as you grow and mature, an example I'm going to give, he will ask you to shut that door. Mm. Some people, I've heard people say, well, God don't want me to do this. Let this happen. God don't, mm, you better listen again. Because sometimes he's already told you to say no. And you're wanting him to do the, the hard stuff instead of you walk through it. So let's give an example of that contract. Here I am being trained as a professional actress. And I'm put on the spot of three out of the whole country for this particular um, role and here it is Playmakers Repertory Company at that time would invite a person back to be in their company well they broke the rule and invited me back a year later here I am wanting to be professional trained to be professional here's a contract that gives me my equity card for New York the guy has someone who has written a song specifically for me for this role I see the whole season and um, I had signed a contract. So I gotta say this. I had signed the contract, had gone back to Virginia. The Lord says, go back, go back. I went back to Chapel Hill. He said, go by the theater department. I went by the theater department. I walk in the guy said, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. He said, we have this season. Oh, he tells me all this stuff. He pulls out how they've already advertised. Here's some nice roles for me. And in it is a voodoo woman. I'm sitting there, y'all. My heart sinks. So he says, I tell him I can't do it. He says, I'll give you two weeks. Two weeks. I agonize. I'm I'm wrestling. That's no peace. Wrestling. Rest. I know I have to say no. But that flesh said, girl, you're going to be on New York. You're going to be on Broadway. You're going to be this and that. So the bottom line is I went by to tell him, no, I cannot do it. He got angry and fussed me out. He said, I have never been told by actors what they will and won't do. Actors don't have morals. Playwrights and directors do. I, I said, sir, I cannot do it. I cannot, as I said earlier, play God preach and then play the devil. But y'all know what? I walk away. I walked away broken. I walked away angry. I walked away crying. I went back to Virginia. I was so angry. I said, God, why? Why do you give me all this talent? You won't let me use it. And I went to a friend of mine who was a pastor. And I said, why? Why, why, Neil? Why? He says, Margaret, God says, he, y'all, I'm tell you, be careful. Be very, very careful. He says, Margaret, God opened that door because you asked him to. But you closed that door because of your love for him. Wow. When we ask God, Going back permissive will, and we ask, and we ask, and we ask. There's a difference between saying, Lord, not my will, but your will be done, and really, really mean that. And a difference between that and Lord, your will be done if it agrees with my will. 
<laughs> but I was broken. And then I still felt like, well, why? why? But the only thing I can say is I am still waiting. Ooh, but let me get up and shout. Mm -hmm. Let me, I can't tell you all the juicy details, but stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Because next year, dot, dot, dot is going to happen. I've already signed a contract. It's already, boom, a done deal. And I said, wow, full circle. Yes. I told someone, I said, you know, I'm going to have these babies. But <laughs> they go off. I'm going back to the theater. They need old actors. So stay tuned. All I can say, uh, Melinda, is that it is still unfolding. Yeah. But there's more in the journey. So lastly, I would not have developed all the other gifts. Dancing was not a strong suit of mine. Theater is stronger. Some people know me for theater, and then some know me for theater and dance. Some know me for just dance. Theaters are stronger. But God allowed me to put that aside so he could develop another part of me. That would have never developed if I stayed here. All for his glory. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm excited doing this because I learn more. Each time you and I talk, I learn more and more um, about you. And and I I'm just I it's funny because there's a lot of wows in the <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> because it's it's so true that oftentimes we want the Lord, we're not willing to do the hard work where we want God to do it all for us. We're like, okay, Lord, I need you to shut the door. I need you, you know, you to, when God is saying, I've empowered you, mm -hmm. I've given you the strength, I've given you the courage, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so understanding that with that, we are going to have to make some hard decisions. We are going to do some hard things. But one of the things that I love that you talked about was the breaking. You said you walk, you walk, you walked away broken. But we know that one of the things that I always use as a good example is, you know, a breaking has to happen for you to build. Ooh. Because if that, if, that, if that breaking didn't happen at that point, he wouldn't have been able to build you in other areas. Oh. And you yeah. think about you think about even with um, Abraham and how the Lord asked him to sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. A part of that, that sacrifice was a breaking that had to happen in Abraham. Mm -hmm. For Abraham to say, you know what, God, I'll give you my son. But because he allowed the Lord to break him, then the Lord said, now I'll make you the father of many nations. Mm. Now I can I can double, I can triple, I can quadruple everything. That, <laughs> double, quadruple <laughs> everything because you allowed me to break. Yes, him. yes. Oh, yes. So and this if that the seed fall to the ground, it cannot produce life. I'm telling exactly. you. Exactly. So this is for someone who's watching where what you're going through is God is trying to break you because the Lord needs you to be broken so that he can build you. Yes. Just like abs. That's my favorite example is, you know, with, with muscles and, and abs and things that nature. And so, but one of the things that I, I love that you touched on, I think it's important that we we talk about this is maturing in Christ because I feel like there is a lot of believers, even today, a lot of followers of Christ that are still in an infant stage. And we know that the word uh, for one, even when Paul was in the new Testament, when he was speaking, he was saying, you should no longer be on milk, but you need to be on meat. But there's many Christians who are still on the bottle, still on milk. And then the word also, one of the things we talked about in Bible study was how even when Jesus um, said that, or in the New Testament, where it talks about how when Jesus ascended, he gave the prophets, the evangelists, the apostles, the teachers, and the pastors for the equipping, it says, and for the body of Christ to mature, knowing that we should continue to be maturing in Christ. And so I, I want to just ask, uh, especially from you, what has that maturing process has been like? And, and is there anything in your journey that helped you to accelerate um, that spiritual maturity? That's a, a, a good question. Um, let me just, first of all, finish that scripture early, except the seeds fall to the ground and dies. I'll make sure I say that it can't produce fruit. Maturing. Oh, I must, I must say this too. 
my mentoring apostle said that, uh, Apostle Elizabeth Harrison at birth uh, said to me one day, she said, yeah, I'm not sure if this was, came from her or she was quoting someone. She said, yeah, they're wearing diapers and trying to eat hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought that was very significant because often we're still in the baby stages, but we want to do big things, but we don't want to sacrifice. Mm. Uh, I remember Pastor Timberlake and the anointing he had, and he cried. He said, it cost. It cost. Maturing in Christ, it cost. The closer you are to God, it cost. And I would dare say not many people are willing to pay that price. Many are called, but few are chosen. There are few people that were willing to pay that price of staying in his face, of fasting and praying. And, and um, e even when I shared about my coming to Christ, do you know, as a non-Christian trying to come to Christ, I fasted for three days Oh wow! before, before I accepted Christ. Do you know what I told him? I said, Lord, I know me. I ain't going to come. <laughs> But I need you to help me come. But just that beginning of that journey and learning the power of fasting. And fasting is a bad word now in some Christian circles. They want to fast TV. I did a study on fasting. I didn't see anywhere it mentioned TV in the Bible. I'm just saying, because yeah. I wanted to know what is that? But it's giving up of yourself. It's giving up. It's like James talks about um, the fourth chapter, the fifth chapter talks about the things that we should be doing, the things we should not be doing. And those things come by allowing the word of God to strip us. So for me, I think, I think the hurt and the disappointments that I've gone through has, and the trials has brought me the closest to God and recognizing I need him. I can't do it without him. You were playing a song before people came on. It says, Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. I put my faith in Jesus. I hope I answered your question. I got kind of caught up in my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 you touched on it um, some, because the question was about to, like, what were the different you the different things that you did, which led, because I guess what I'm getting yeah, I got at you. is a lot of people may are believers, but they don't know where they stand in terms of their spiritual growth. They have no idea. They're like, I don't know if I'm a, an infant. I, I think I'm, you know, a, a mature believer, but they may question that. They don't know where they stand. And so I guess one of the questions is how do you know that you're in a place of maturity when it comes to your, your uh, walk with Christ? And then also, what are things that help you? Because I consider you to be a very mature believer. I go to you for almost everything. But what are things that help you get to the place of where you are today? I think you touched on that um, a little bit. And I guess, okay, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I think for me, again, it goes back to the realness of my relationship with God. And I am different, y'all. I mean, y'all, I tripped in my house not too long ago. Felt my legs going through the air. I landed over six feet on a couch, laying on my side. And I missed hitting this, hitting that, and laying just like this. And I looked back and my shoes were positioned very nicely together over there by the steps. I knew an angel carried me. I've had the kinds of experiences that I wouldn't tell people about. I had God put a visible wall between me and a woman. I was going to choke. I was going to kill that woman. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, I said, God, why can't I kill her? I couldn't figure out why I kept bumping into this wall and couldn't kill her. What am I saying? My walk with Christ, as I said, began when he came to me and said he loved me. But it's that private time with God. It's that private spending that time in prayer, fasting in his word, and being open to say yes. And I would say, Melinda, probably the mentors he put in my pathway. Mm. that would tell me truth would not allow like when my spiritual mother told me she says uh i told her she was like a bulldog ooh, 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 ooh. i said no disrespect i said mama faith no disrespect but you like you like a bulldog ooh, ooh, ooh. and then one day i noticed she wasn't barking at me anymore like she used to matter of fact she barely said anything to me and i went to i said um i said mama i said you don't do like you used to she said you don't need it like you used to 
So when God started putting people in my mentors in my pathway and being humble enough to recognize, and y'all know for me, it was, it's a journey, but being humble enough to recognize that somebody knows more than you, somebody might can help you, somebody might can help birth you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that, that has helped me a lot. Um, my personal time with God, there've been a lot of things God says, even I'm going to tell you myself. I even have prophets prophesy to everybody else get to me and say, God said, you can tell you yourself. I'm like, why can't I get a prophecy like everybody else? Yeah. But he's, he's required me to do the things differently. He's required me to come to him directly. And then the times that we share, oh, the sweetness of what we share has helped me. So how do you know you mature? I guess number one, you're still here. You're still on the faith, on the journey. You didn't quit. You didn't give up. You may have stumbled. You may have fallen. You may have failed back. That's about righteous man falls seven times. Hey, but you're still standing. You're still here. What does that say? And you're still wanting more. That hunger or the discontent with where you are. He said, mm, I don't like that. I won't. I won't. Hey. That's the Holy Spirit doing this. Like, come on, baby. Come on. I got something else for you. You're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. And I also think, just to add, I think things start to change. Um, and, and what I mean by that is even how, like you said, how God addresses us, where it's almost like you think about a, a child when they're learning to walk, you're holding their hand, you're right there beside them, um, kind of helping, even though God is always there with us. But it's more so of the nurturing process that happens in the beginning versus as you mature, then it becomes, like you said, you close that door. You know, I, this is for me to tell you to do it. And, and also, I, I think, and, and you get your opinion on this, even your time with him starts to change where you start to, it may start out with, I'm in there for five minutes and come out. But as you mature, then it starts to grow. So in all the different areas, it starts to grow. How you spend time with him starts to change. How you study and read starts to change, where all of that is a part, part of the maturing and the growing. Is, is that something that you would agree with? I would agree with that because um, early on, again, it was just that sweetness of going to his presence, learning how to hear his voice, writing down the things he says, I'm a dreamer, so I would write down my dreams. Then when I see the dreams come to pass, it was strengthening my faith. And so it made me want more. But also I've told God when I've been bored praying, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm tired, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> or in my quiet time, I was taught early on as a Christian, as a baby Christian, that you needed to do several things to stay strong, read the word, pray. You had to fellowship with others and share your faith. They said, that's the will to keep it rolling. So I had that foundation of go and have your quiet time every day with him. But I found that uh, one time Pastor Tim Lake in his, his uh, teaching had us listen to Dr. Paul Cho. And he had the largest church, I think, career at the time. And he talked about them praying in the spirit for three hours a day, his prayer team. And I remember when I was carrying Michelle and I had to lay on that bed for four, five, six months on my left side drinking water because I was in labor and I began to pray and pray and, and challenge myself to pray three hours. But it's interesting now I can go in there and pray and I look up at the hour and a half and two hours and three or so and I, it didn't feel like it. I'm like, wow, that's a long ways from, all right, Jesus. I'm gonna keep yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And so as we're wrapping today, I know we've been here um, for some time. Um, I guess my final question would be, what, what advice do you have for someone who is hungry? Someone who's, you know, because the people that are watching this are going to be in all different walks of life. You're going to have some that are uh, probably just starting this journey, some that have been on this journey, got off track, got back on, and then some that's been in it. But what advice would you have for those who are hungry and really want to get to that, maybe that close relationship like you have and re really want to get to a place where they're truly transformed in Christ? What advice would you have for them? I would say trust the process. Trust the process. Trust that he that has begun a good work in you will. He's faithful. He's faithful. He is faithful. 
He will perform it. He will do it. This old lady told me, and um, y'all know I'm candid, I'm real, when um, your dad and I split up, you know, and I was supposed, you got to stay celibate, you got a man right now. And this old lady passed me in church one day, she looked at me, she said, Lord, to keep you if you want to be kept. And that registered, same thing. If you're hungry, if you're on this journey, God will keep you if you want to be kept. Trust the process. And lastly, take him your realness. Take him your realness. Don't try to say it fancy. Um, last testimony, when I was a baby Christian, I was had been in the streets. So my testimonies in church was all slang. They ain't no and this guy came with me and rebuked me. He said to me, you can't even come up in here with that worldly talk, trying to be a Christian. It crushed my heart. And then I heard someone say, you can't question God. I said, well, what kind of God is this? You can't ask him no questions. But I found myself pulling back. Y'all, this is real. Please hear me. I found myself trying to pray the prayers that others were praying. Here I was, y'all know I'm fasted, got saved. Here's Jesus coming to get me. I'm spending this time with him. He and I playing tags in the wood. We have experiences, other folk, <laughs> other folk. I'm, I'm about to step off the curb and somebody pulls me up off the curb, car go by, look, nobody's there. I'm having these angelic experiences, but I ain't telling Christians because they, they don't told me now something wrong with me. So I'm thinking something must be wrong with me. So finally I'm here at this place of God. And I'm trying to be real. So I start trying to pray prayers like Christians pray. Lastly, his spirit withdrawing from me. I sent him moving away. I said, God, I got on my knees. I said, God, what is it? He said, you stop being honest with me. I said, wow. I used to say stuff like, Lord, I'm here with you. I don't know what. He wanted me to say those things because it was true. So just be real, be real, be real. He's a real God. You're in a real world. You deal with a real devil and he can handle your stuff. He can handle your business. I need that on the t-shirt. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you all for joining um, us this evening. And uh, I see Phil is on, Kendra's on. Um, I pray that a word that was shared tonight truly bless you. And I would say, don't let this be just some an another nice video that you watch where you heard everything that was said, but yet you go and take no action. And so I, I wanna challenge each person as you're listening to this to think about your own relationship with God and where you are on your walk and really ask yourself, do I wanna continue to grow? Do I want that relationship with God? And then write down as God leads, what are the things that I need to change? What am I going to change today? What am I going to change uh, in, in my time with the Lord? Is it that I'm not spending time? I'm going to go spend more time with the Lord. But I challenge you to do that and then start to come back to it. As, as my mom shared, as Apostle shared, she wrote it down and she came back to it because we'll see the growth and the things that God will do in your life. And so again, I thank you all for joining. If you haven't joined our group, join our group, join the Bible study amongst friends group. I want to thank our special guests here. It's been such an honor to have you here. And also just, I'm just truly blessed to have you in my life uh, as someone who has, as I said, I told, as I said earlier, you prayed me out of sin, <laughs> but you also, God has used you to nurture me as I've been on this journey um, as you are full of so much wisdom. So thank you. Um, lastly, I just want to say, where can people find you? I know you have some books out. Uh, and so where can people find you if they want to connect with you and things that you've done? Um, you can reach me at Dr. Margaret, D-R Margaret at D-R Margaret B is in beautiful, right to dot com. So D-R Margaret at D-R Margaret B right com. That's also my website, um, D-R Margaret B right dot com. You have my books up there. You can order them. There's some others I'm working on right now that are gonna be published this year as well. Uh, we'll give you my phone number, but that just overwhelms me. So, but you can, <laughs> you can email, I tell you I'm real. You can email me please and I will respond. But thank you so much for this privilege, for this opportunity. I'm so grateful. I'm so proud of you and all my children. I'm grateful God gave me all, all four of you plus thousands more. Thank you. Yes. 
And um, I'm going to have, I'm going to say a prayer over you, and then I want uh, you to pray us out. Um, your, your, daughter, your other daughter requested it as well. And so I just, first, Lord, I thank you for this time and this moment to share a word. Uh, and Lord, just even to to grow closer to you. And so, Lord, I pray over Apostle Wright right now. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing in her life. God, and even showing us that that no matter where we are, that you'll continue to do and even continue to give us and how you're you're um, even showing her new things even today. God, how you have so much things in store. So we pray for continued increase over her, God. I, I pray that even now that she'll continue to be wowed by you and Lord, that you will give her all of the desires of her heart. God, I also pray, I know she's traveling right now, God, and, and it's a time for rest for her. So I do pray that she'll be able to rest mentally, Lord, and she'll be able to rest in her body. Okay. And we thank you again for everything that you're doing. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You put me on blast. It's hard I to rest. Did. Okay, last thing I want to say to you real quick before I pray is that one of the things I've been doing is healing the trauma through the use of drama. And I've done some small seminars. I would love to do a group with young, young people, and particularly young women who've gone through sexual abuse and some other things. One of my books is called I Receive Your Love. It's a book. It's also going to be a play that we're doing at some point. But I'm starting a television show later on this year. And it's going to be based on that book, I Receive Your Love, and the healing of trauma. So just want you to be mindful of that because some people, you need that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for an opportunity. Daddy, you know I'm so grateful. So grateful that you are a real God. <laughs> I thank you because your presence is real. I thank you for today, Lord, this opportunity to speak to so many voices out there. But daddy, I ask that you clean their ears to hear what the spirit is saying to them. I pray, Father God, they will not stumble. Lord, I reminded you when you did Noah's Ark, you were very specific. What kind of wood, how many inches, how to do it, when to do it. I pray, Father, that they would be willing to lay down their lives, their will to hear what you have for them. Because daddy, you got something so good for them. But let them open to receive it. In the name of Jesus, we pray to remove all barriers to let them hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen, 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 in Jesus' name, amen. Put that stamp on it. Done, it is done, amen. Well, again, thank you all for joining. Um, come back and see us here at the Bible Study Amongst Friends Facebook group. Uh, every Monday, Wednesday morning for morning devotion and prayer, as well as every other Wednesday for Bible study. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Love you all. See y'all later. Thank you.